Welcome to Electron Online. Nothing like some good examples to show you how common filtering works. So we're going to take the previous example from the previous video and carry it on a few steps further to see how the iterative process works for common filtering. Again, the true temperature was 72 degrees. Our initial estimate was 68 with an error of 2. And the initial measurement, 75 with an error of 4. We have the three equations right here. One to calculate the Kalman gain, one to calculate the current estimate, and one to calculate the updated error estimate. All right. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the Kalman gain. We're going to do that by using the estimate in the error of 2 and the error in the measured value of 4. So the first Kalman gain value is going to be equal to 2 divided by 2 plus 4 which is equal to uh, 2 sixths, which is 1 third, which is 0 0.33. And we can put that right here, 0 0.33. All right, from that, we should be able to calculate an updated estimate. The current estimate now right here is equal to the previous estimate of 68. So the estimate is equal to the previous estimate of 68 plus the Kalman gain that we just calculated, 0 0.33 times the difference of the measured value, which is 75, minus the previous estimate of 68. So the difference here is 7. This is 1 third. 1 third of 7 is 2 and a third. Add it to 68. That gives us 70 and a third of 70.33. And that would now be the new estimate, 70.33. So what we want to do now is calculate the new, calculate the new error in the estimate. So to do that, so error in the estimate is going to be equal to 1 minus the Kalman gain, 1 minus 0 0.33, multiplied times the previous error estimate, which is 2. That would be um, 0.66 times 2, that would be equal to 1.33, and that's going to be the new error estimate, 1.33, which is what's going to be used the next time around. All right? So we can then go ahead and plug that. So the next time around, that'll be our new error estimate. The next measurement we took was 71. So let's see how that will now give us a new Kalman gain, a new estimate, and new error in the estimate. So with the new value of 71, the Kalman gain is equal to the error in the estimate, which is now 1.33, that's a 3, divided by 1.33 plus 4. Notice that the error in the measurement does not change. If you're using the same apparatus, you expect the same error there. So there will be 1.33 divided by 5.33. So we have a new Kalman gain of 0 0.25, which goes in here, 0 0.25. Now the new estimate, estimated value, so the new estimated value this should be estimated value. Oh, error in the estimate. Okay, there we go. I was looking at the wrong thing here. Estimated value is equal to the previous estimated value of 70.33 plus the Kalman gain 0 0.25 times the difference between the measured value, which now would be 71, minus the uh, estimated value on the previous go around, which was 70.33. So that's a small difference, that's 0 0.67 times 0 0.25, so 0 0.67 times 0 0.25, and add that to the 70 plus 70.33 equals, and so the new estimated value is going to be 70.50, 70.50, which can go in here. And now we also have to calculate the new error in that estimate, so the error in the estimate is going to be equal to 1 minus the Kalman gain times the previous error in the estimate, which is 1.33. So that would be 0 0.75 times 1.33, 1.33 uh, times 0 0.75. That would be exactly 1.00, and that goes in here. And that will be the value we're going to use for the next iteration. So we take another measurement. This time the measurement is 70. All right, so the Kalman gain, the Kalman gain is equal to the error in the estimate, which is going to be 1 divided by 1 plus 4, which is equal to 1 fifth, which is equal to 0 0.20. So the new Kalman gain is 0 0.20. Now we're going to calculate the new estimate. So the estimate 
is going to be equal to the previous estimate, which was 70.5, plus the Kelman gain of 0 0.20 times the measured value, which is 70, minus the previous estimate of 70.5. Notice, since our new measured value was less than the, than the, um, the new measured value was less than the previous estimate, the estimate is going to go down by a slight amount. So that would be 0.5, which is negative, times 0.2, which is 0.1, added to that. So this is now going to be 70.4. But notice, because of the Kalman gain methodology, you can see that the, uh, the Kalman gain here is very small, one-fifth. So it's now going to drop the value by a lot. It really filters it down into to a smooth uh, process. So there'll be 70.40. And then, of course, we need to find a new error estimate. And that's going to be 1 minus, 1 minus the Kalman gain, which is 0 0.2, multiplied times the previous error of 1.00. That's going to give us 0 0.80. And that goes in here, 0 0.80. All right, one more reading. Now it's 74, so that means our new Kelman gain, give me some space here. So the Kelman gain is going to be 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.8 plus 4. So it would be 0 0.8 divided by 4.8 equals 0 0.17. 0 0.17, that's our new Kelman gain that goes in here, 0 0.17. From that, we're going to calculate the new estimate. So the new estimate, the current estimate, is going to be the previous estimate of 70.4 plus the Kalman gain, 0 0.17, times the difference between the measured value of 74 minus the, uh, the previous value of 70.4, that would be 3.6, so this times 3.6 equals, that's 0 0.6, add that to that, so the estimated value is going to be 0. Point, oh, not 0. Point, but 71. So I'm adding 0. 0.6 to 70.4, that's giving me 71. So there's our new value, 71. And then the error in the estimate, error in the estimate is going to be equal to 1 minus the Kalman gain of 0 0.17 multiplied times the previous error, which is 0 0.8. So that's 0 0.8 times 0 0.83 equals 0.66. And that goes in here, 0 0.66. So what that means is that after one, two, three, four measurements, we're only one degree off the actual value. So the Kelman filtering really does work very quickly with only four readings. We're within one degree of the actual value when we had an initial estimate of 68. So you can see it very quickly goes to the value that we're looking for. And that's how Kelman filtering works, at least in a simple example here where we just have a single measured value and we're looking for a single true value. It gets a little bit more complicated when we have multiple values. Instead of having single values calculations, we have to have matrix calculations where each matrix will contain a number of things that we're trying to track, such as position in the X, Y, Z, and velocity in the X, Y, Z, and so forth. So that's how it's done in a simple example. Now we'll move on to the more comp complex examples where we use matrices in the Kalman filtering process.